Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is a real quick update on Marco and Laura. We will not spend hardly any time on Marco. As you can see, Marco is what we in meteorology call a naked swirl sitting off the Louisiana Delta there, the Mississippi Delta, moving gently to the north. And I'll show you the track here in just a second. Our real focus is Laura as she is moving just south of the Cuban coast. I want to show you a true color visible imagery becoming increasingly better organized as the center is now no longer exposed as it was this morning. And uh, we have some convection moving uh, around the center as it is moving off to the west northwest. So let me show you the uh, track of Marco real quick. Uh, as we mentioned yesterday, I didn't really buy that real sharp turn. It was going to take it right along the southern coast of Louisiana offshore uh, as it uh, uh, then off the coast of Texas and finally dissipating. And so what we have now is a track right along the Mississippi Delta just south of New Orleans as a tropical depression. Winds are really uh, dying down quickly with this system. I really don't expect much of an impact as you, you saw the satellite picture, not a lot of convection with the system, uh, just a lot of lower uh, level clouds. And I put the where the center is right here. You can see uh, this low level center just off the, the Mississippi Delta. Taking a look at Laura, we can see Laura here, the track uh, still zeroing in on southwestern Louisiana. And I'm going to show you why we're still a little bit concerned with the upper Texas coast. Uh, the aircraft is out there investigating right now. The center is bouncing around as it's trying to reorganize after being disrupted earlier this morning with the mountains of uh, southern Cuba. Anytime you get a a weaker tropical storm interacting with a landmass, you can get the lower level circulation kind of disrupted. So it's still trying to reform itself. We had what we call an ASCAT pass, which is a satellite pass. You can see the swath here. So the satellite flies over, it senses where the lower level winds are in the system. And we can see that uh, we have a pretty good circulation here, but it's kind of elongated towards the south, southwest. So anywhere along this uh, trough of low pressure here in the lower level of the atmosphere, we could actually get a lower level center reformation. It kind of depends on where the mid-level center is, where this is going to reform. So we have a little bit of a low uh, uh, area, low pressure here, and we have a main center right here. So taking a look at where the recon found the center and where the ASCAP found the center, I've kind of think the center is probably somewhere right around in here, a little bit south of the track, but uh, still within the cone. So this could have big implications on where Laura ends up going. Anywhere south of the forecasted track, if it tracks south of the track, that's going to have big implications on final landfall along the north or northwest Gulf Coast. And really, I think we can say northwest Gulf Coast right now. So taking a look at the tracks from 12Z or 7 o'clock this morning, we see we're really zeroing in on southwest Louisiana. And I'm going to show you also why we're still uh, haven't ruled out uh, the southeast Texas coast. Um, but this is right now what we call the early track uh, guidance. And if we look at the ensembles from, I believe this is the European uh, from 6Z, we still have a widespread, but they're really clustered from Matagorda Bay to around Lake Charles. And uh, with the, now we look at the GFS from 6Z, we still have that cluster from Galveston Bay to Lake Charles. And the GFS is, the operational GFS is still pulling it in just south of Lake Charles. However, the 6Z Euro pulls it in around San Luis Pass and puts a big swath of wind right over Galveston Bay. And you can see some of these wind gusts here. 
the max wind gust at 30 feet of 160 miles an hour. That is an incredible uh, wind gust profile here. And one of the other maps I wanted to show you is what the European was showing for wave heights in feet across the Gulf of Mexico, showing about 60 foot waves across the Gulf of Mexico as it brings the center in near San Luis Pass. So bottom line is the threat still remains somewhere between, I believe, Galveston Bay and Lake Charles. If you're in Lake Charles, I have family in Lake Charles and I have good friends that have family in Lake Charles, you're going to be pretty far inland uh, from devastating wind. Uh, however, what you need to be prepared for is loss of power. And that's the case anywhere, you know, one county inland, you're really looking at uh, down trees, loss of power. So if you have big trees on your property, you do need to be worried about that. But this is the day where you need to be making your preparations. You need to be listening to your, you know, emergency management of, uh, officials in your county. You need to be making those final preps. You need to be really paying attention to what's going on around you. This thing is moving still relatively fast. And so we really only have about a day left to, to make decisions here. And so, uh, Going back here at the track and looking what we're looking at, we see that uh, we have our cone of air anywhere from Galveston Bay uh, all the way over to central Louisiana coast. But I still feel very confident that the eventual landfall is somewhere here in southwestern Louisiana over to around Galveston Bay. We do have that uh, European forecast calling for a landfall here at the 60. I don't know what the 12Z shows. It hasn't come out yet. But we show that landfall uh, around San Luis Pass. I do believe that is too far to the left. Things could change, but I think that's too far to the left. I, I feel real confident somewhere between High Island here, uh, Eastern Galveston Bay, all the way over to south of Lake Charles. I'm leaning real close to the Louisiana-Texas state line, maybe just a little bit east of there. But again, we need to pay real close attention to the official forecast. And as you can see, landfall is going to be sometime late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. But those uh, tropical storm force winds will be coming on the coast sometime late Wednesday night. And the official forecast is calling for this probably to be a cat to uh, and I would not be surprised to see it be a little bit stronger uh, at landfall. So I'll be updating again later this afternoon after the 4 o'clock advisory comes in. We'll have more models to look at, so I'll be updating again. But until next time, just remember that Jesus is still on the throne. Nothing catches him by surprise, and he's still in control of the world. God bless. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this edition of Agape Livecast. And whether you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, I ask that you do me a favor. Please like the video and share it. And if you haven't already done so, please like the Agape Livecast Facebook page. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, may God richly bless you and keep you.